Welcome back to the channel everyone. One of the things that I'm actually surprised uh, has gotten as much response as it has is the the sewer box that I built for our, our pod. So what I was going to do today is I've been thinking about building another one of these anyway on the other side and put our, our Legos and our leveling blocks all on one side. I was going to talk about how I built this and actually build another one. So we built this as a storage for our sewer. It holds two sewer lines. It holds all of our sewer connections. And it ends up being about 11 inches deep. And about 35 inches across. And it's about five inches tall in here. But we're going to uh, build one on the other side and uh, show you how it's done. Okay, so this is the side I've decided I'm gonna build it. This one's gonna be behind the, the tire. The other one was in front. And what I've worked off of is the supports that uh, are factory on the trailer. I just, uh, I start with building the outside walls for the compartment based on this. And basically I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces of three quarter inch plywood at five and a quarter inches tall and 11 inches long. So we'll get to work. All right, so we got the table saw set at five and a quarter. We're gonna make our cuts. down to 11 inches. Okay, these are going to make the two walls for the cabinet and we'll start working on it. So now what I'm going to do is temporarily place the uh, outside walls of the cabinet on the trailer itself. Now just as a, uh, I guess a caveat, I'm not uh, learned in construction i basically self-taught everything this is just how i'm doing it um, i just figured it would be good to show this since there's been so much comments and activity on on this modification for the trailer now that i've got them mounted here what i'm going to do is get the right size drill bit i've just gone through my scrap bolt drawer and found four bolts i'm going to drill two holes in each board through the metal trailer uh, support and then bolt these pieces uh, more permanently to the metal structure. So I'll go get that drill and we'll get going. Okay, so I got the two sides put on. They're both held with two bolts. The bolts go through the metal support and that creates the outside of the box. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece of plywood that'll fit on the bottom to, uh, to cover that along the bottom. Yeah, as I work on this, of course I'm just out in my driveway on the gravel. Just as a suggestion for comfort, don't do like I am and climb on the gravel itself. If you have a large scrap piece of cardboard, you can lay that down, have something to, to be a lot smoother and softer to actually lay on. 
All right, so I have a piece of 3 8 inch plywood here, just a scrap piece that I'm gonna use for the floor. We're gonna cut it to the 11 inch width to fit the, uh, the wood I've already installed on the trailer, and then we'll cut it down to the proper length. All right, so I went and measured from the outside to outside of the boards I've installed, and it's 39 and 5 eighths inches, so I'm gonna cut this down to that size. Now we have our floor. All right, so now we have the floor cut out, test fit it, and it's cut the right way, so we're good there. Now I'm gonna put glue down on both ends and screw it in place. We got the majority of the box done now. Then all we have to do is cut a door for it and put some hardware on. Now, if you are concerned about the back gap there, you could put a small piece of wood in there um, or make this uh, not as deep. So it's uh, a little shallower if you cut the side pieces down to say four and three quarters, uh, that should close that up pretty good back there. But uh, what I use for this for, I don't need to worry about because I always put big items in, like all my sewer is very big items. And I'm thinking about either keeping my wheel chocks or uh, maybe our, our leveling Legos in here to help clear out some of the uh, pass through. Now we're cutting out the door itself. I'm cutting that at five and an eighth inch tall and then I'll cut it to the same length so that it fits properly. Now that we got it cut to the proper height, we're gonna cut it to the proper length, 39 and five eighths. But one thing with the door is there are bolt heads, or bolts that come down, uh, attaching the main trailer to the frame. I don't wanna mess with those at all, so I leave those in place. But for the door to work proper, we need to notch the door so i'll put the door up mark where the bolts are and then i'll go notch these and test fit it to make sure it works proper all right so we got the notches made for around the framework and the bolts so the door now fits proper. So all that's left to do now is to install the hinge. I always put the hinge towards the front and then a hasp on the back with a carabiner to hold it shut. But before I do the hardware, I'm gonna do a quick sanding to uh, knock down the rough edges. And then I've got some outdoor uh, paint that's black so that it kind of matches the trailer and doesn't stand out and we'll get it painted. So what I'm using is a Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Premium Fast Drying Indoor Outdoor Durability Paint. Now it is wood, uh, as much as I would love to say this paint lasts forever, I use it on my, my uh, stabilizer pads. I've made some homemade stabilizer pads that are three quarter inch plywood glued together. So it's two layers for each of the, the uh, stabilizers. And then for the tongue jack, I have three layers of, of uh, plywood, three quarter plywood. It's all glued and screwed together. And then it's got a handle on it so it's easy to carry around. Um, and. I am painting those about once a year because the paint does not last continuously. So even the other box, I'm gonna have to uh, do another coat of paint. I'm probably gonna do that today while I'm at it. So what I'll do is 
while this is in place, I give it two full coats of paint before I add any hardware. So we'll get to it. So I've got some spare parts laying around. I'm trying to do this one on the cheap side. So I've been grabbing stuff. I know this hinge is uh, way too big for this, but it is gonna hold it. Uh, the only thing I found, and this is the same with the other side, is a lot of the screws come through. So I use my angle grinder to grind those down so it's nice and smooth so you don't catch yourself on the ends of the screws. So now I'm gonna get this mounted up, get this door painted, and then we'll let it uh, dry and and uh, get ready for a second coat. So I got all the hardware installed. Sorry I didn't film that. Uh, and now I'm getting the first coat of paint inside and outside of the door. And then we'll let it sit and dry and get a second coat and uh, it's ready to go. able to get the second coat of paint on the new box and uh, got it up and operational. I think what we're going to use this one for is holding the uh, wheel chocks in. I uh, made those uh, modeled after uh, wheel chalk I used in the uh, Marine Corps in aircraft fire and rescue for aircraft and I like the fact that it kind of clamps on a single uh, axle like what we've got but it holds it really well they've done really well those will fit in here a couple of things on this is I was on the cheap this time around so I used what materials and uh, supplies I had here on hand the hasp is one that I had on hand the hinge is actually a door hinge and the door and the floor are both 3 8 inch plywood again stuff that I had on hand if I was going to do it again and go out and buy materials for it, I would buy at least half inch uh, material for both the floor and the door just to make it a little more stronger and more supportive. I mean, you can see this door has a slight warp to it and the door on the other side also has a slight warp to it, but I think that would be a lot less if I was using half inch and half inch would just be more sturdy. Uh, but other than that, that's how I put it together. I hope uh, you got something out of this and, and uh, maybe I'll see some other R-Pods out there with this box style going down the road. While well, we're working on the trailer, I was going to point out some issues that we've been having. As you can see, I've taken the trim off of the uh, sides of the shower tray. We've been having a leak and I've been fighting to figure out where it's coming from. When I come over here, I could feel it up, up here coming down. And we thought for a little bit that it might've been plumbing. So I've actually pulled all the plumbing apart, pulled it all out, tested it. It's not the problem. The problem is the design of this, this uh, shower base. So when I pulled it all apart, you can see that the tab on the shower base does not come all the way out. It leaves this gap. Also notice that when I pulled it all apart, that this part of the shower base is taller than in here. So this becomes like a trough and the water flows down in here and down into there and that's where our leak is coming from. So I am going to be working on caulking this up and then I'm going to run a bead of caulk in the trim itself also in an effort to double seal this corner so hopefully we don't have that issue down the road. Alright so what I'm going to try to do is get as much caulk into that seam as possible and then again put some caulking in here to basically create a dam in here as well 
in hopes that no water can get back in here because that is where our, our water is just coming from around the edges. All of it's kind of a trough and it all comes here and leaks. And I am no expert. I uh, just do things as looks best to me and if you guys got any suggestions out there let me know. Also I'd like to kind of know if any other uh, folks out there have been having the same issue. Because my guess is this is not just isolated to us. For having this leak here. And we've done all kinds of work thinking it was other things and it ends up just being a poorly designed flange on the on the shower which is kind of disappointing Well, I'm not the neatest when it comes to caulk, but it is back together. I think I may have fixed that issue so that we don't have leaks anymore. I guess we need to go camping and try it out and find out, huh? So let me know in the comments if any of you other folks have had issues with your R-Pod shower leaking and what you've done to fix it. Thanks for watching.